Today's episode is brought to you by Source Forensics. Are you looking for a video conversion service? Well, look no further because I got one for you. If you are looking for fast, efficient, and honest, Source Forensics is your go-to. Since 2003, they have been converting weddings, baptisms, sports, and other videos. They have become a reputable and well-known video conversion service. Their team is up for every job, managing projects with the skill and experience their clients have come to expect. They want their customers to be satisfied with their work, which is why they provide open communication channels throughout the duration of each project. Trust Source with all your precious memories stored on various legacy formats, VHS tapes, DVDs, CDs, mini DVDs, cassettes, old vinyl, and 35mm slides. Whatever the job is, they got you covered. Contact them at 401-203-5019. Again, that's 401-203-5019. Or visit their website at www.source.com. Forensics.com. Again, that's www.sourceforensics.com. Now for our episode. All right. All right. You ready? Yep. All right. On today's show, I welcome on a very special guest. He's a three-time coach of the year and the executive director of the Round Interscholastic League. He is Mike Lunny. Mike, how are you today? Oh, I'm great, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank thank you for coming on. I appreciate you, uh, you know, being able to make time out of your day with during these crazy times with everything that I'm sure you got going on, uh, and being able to, to come on the show. Um, how are you doing during these these times right now? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been difficult. I think the the way I've been trying to describe it it's kind of like trying to drink water out of a fire hose <laughs> um, you know but I mean it's it's uh it's just been different work I mean we're always busy and we're always doing things um you know to try to to try to support kids in, in high school and give kids high school uh, sport opportunities and in a school-based environment but um mo- you know most importantly right now it's just about putting safety protocols in place and really trying to um, try to find a way to get every single sport in this year in some, in some form or fashion. But this virus obviously has a mind of its own and, uh, we're, we're just having to adjust almost daily. And, and this is something that we're not used to because, uh, you know, we're always trying to project things out. Like we're always trying to get a season ahead of, of, of things. And, um, so it's been a lot of different type of work this year, but, uh, it's been tiresome. But I, I think the one thing that I want to do is, is uh, you know, take, take a, a, a quick minute and just thank our, our superintendents, our principals, our ADs, our coaches for sure, um, that have been doing an unbelievable job just trying to create opportunities for kids. And um, so it's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it done, um, but it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't imagine, uh, you know, this is something, it's just like crazy, like, and we had talked about this out there. Like, I don't think ever in our lifetime we'd ever experience something like this. And like I was saying to you, I know, I thought maybe when this had happened, we'd maybe see like two months of this, not maybe a, not going into a full year of it. Yeah, no, I mean, unfortunately, like we were talking about a little earlier, it, you know, the end of last winter, I mean, we're already into this winter season now and it, it's almost been a year like you're talking about. And uh, we were thinking that, you know, is there some way we can get this winter season done and just trying to finish our state tournament in basketball and, and, uh, and our finals in ho- ice hockey for division one and two. Um, and, uh, I mean, we were just scrambling trying to figure out a way to get it done. And unfortunately we weren't able to, and then we lost the, the whole spring season, um, to COVID and, uh, you know, it's just been a, it's the off season has been just planning and, and working with the department of health and the governor's office, uh, and, and, and just trying to find a way. And so it's, uh, you know, cause you know, I really feel for, especially our seniors and, yeah. uh, who are just being, having a disrupted season again. And, um, so anything that we can do to, to provide those opportunities for them, cause it's once in a lifetime, as you know, it, 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 you know, once you, once you go through this and it's done, um, you know, there's no turning back. And, and so, you know, you can't replace these things. So we're, we're trying to do everything we can to make it happen. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, I give you guys all the credit in the world for what you're dealing with and trying to make all the sports happen. I know you're, you're doing your best for, 
the safeties and the safety for the, all the, the students and, and the, the staff and as well as the, the audience that people that would like to watch a game, but, you know, sometimes maybe not be allowed, but you're doing, you, you guys are doing amazing work. I, I, I can't imagine being in your position, and everything that you, uh, that you're going through, but you guys have done a wonderful job, even just to make some seasons happen that, you know, for those seniors that you've mentioned. Yeah. And we've got a long way to go too. And it, as, as much work as we've done, I, you know, I'm looking forward and, and saying, you know, we're already into January and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just a crazy time to think that, uh, you know, that we're, we're, we're still battling this whole thing, but, but there's optimism. I mean, I think there's optimism right now with the vaccine rolling out. Um, and like we said, after we get past this, uh, hopefully there's not a huge bump after the holidays uh, and a spike. And, and hopefully once we get past this, things are going to incrementally get better as we go. Um, like in the fall, things kind of got worse at the end. And yeah. so hoping that it's going to be the other direction now and, and that things will get better and, and just looking forward to some, uh, some fun seasons uh, ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope, I hope everything works out well. Uh, I know it's the, it's a difficult time, but you guys are making it work in the, in the best way possible. And, um, you know, if you don't mind, maybe we'll just ask some of the, the, the get the coronavirus questions out of the way now, and then we'll start with go right into your career. Cause I know you've had, you have one hell of a, a career and everything that you've accomplished in, uh, you know, a basketball career, you know, what do you expect for the upcoming basketball season with this pandemic and everything? Well, I mean, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of schools, um, probably about three quarters of our schools that have started practices um, for the winter. Uh, they started on the 4th of, of January. Um, so they're into their, their practice mode right now. Um, but there's still a group of schools that aren't going to start until the 11th. And so there's a little bit of a stagger there. But the, the hardest part right now is that we haven't gotten clearance to play games from the state. And, no. um, and, and I think the – the reports that I'm getting is that the, the concern right now is what's happening in the, in the, with the virus after the holidays. And like, there was a spike after Thanksgiving and they're saying, okay, if there's another spike after the holidays, you know, how are we going to be able to deal with that safely? Um, but the good news is we've got all of our protocols in place um, that uh, we've been, you know, working with our schools and implementing those. Um, so we're ready to go. We're just looking for the green light and, um, and, and hopefully it's going to come soon, but uh, we, we don't have an exact date right now, but hopefully in, in the next few days, we're going to have some better direction. I hope so. I hope, that, I hope it all works out. And I hope uh, we had met, like you had said before, that these seniors, these uh, young men that we have actually just sat on a round table, you know, they're definitely looking forward towards the senior seasons and everything can work out for them. And hopefully we can get some games going. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get away from the the coronavirus stuff. Uh, you you deal with that stuff all, all the time. Let's let's get into your career. I wanna I wanna you know talk about you because you you coach have had a great career in your in your basketball career. But like, how did you get into basketball? When did you start playing, and what what made you get into basketball? Uh, so well, I, I, I'm a native Rhode Islander, so I, I grew up in Bristol, uh, Rhode Island, and and actually uh, played for Bristol High School. Uh, before it became Mount Hope High School. So, um, but, you know, Bristol is a great community. And, uh, you know, I was really fortunate to, to be in, in a, a sports-minded community. Uh, but I was a three-sport kid. Um, you know, I was a, a football, basketball, baseball player. Um, so whatever season we, we had, that's what I played. But, um, but I had a special passion for basketball for my whole life. So um, I kind of picked up the football and, and, and baseball in the spring, but every season was basketball to me. So even after practice was over in, in those other sports, I was, I was in the gym and definitely a gym rat. And uh, Bristol had, a, had a, uh, an old YMCA that had a great little court in it that uh, I was always saying there was a playground that was walking distance from my house that I lived at. And, um, and then there was a community center gym that I actually, uh, I guess it's the statute of limitations is over right now, but I actually had a key to that place. And, and uh, I was able to like, you know, sneak in there whenever I wanted to, to, to get workouts. So, uh, and then, then I had Roger Williams college back then when I was a kid, it was Roger Williams college. And um, I spent a ton of time down there as a, as a real young player uh, and, and really got uh, just got in the gym any, any chance I got. So that, that's kind of how I started. And, and so I was a three sport kid all the way through high school. Um, and, uh, you know, so it was, uh, it's just been a passion of mine and I don't know why, 
um, because basketball, I mean, basketball in Bristol was not, was probably third behind, you know, behind football and baseball wow. in the town. Uh, so it was just a fun, but it was just a fun time. And I just, uh, you know, I just loved it. I mean, and I, I didn't care if it was, uh, when I trained, I didn't care if there were people. I mean, I didn't, you know, if there was a one, you know, if there was another people person that wanted to play, that was great. But um, I was that guy that could just go to the playground and stay there all day by myself. And um, so it was just fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. And what position did you end up playing? Like what position did you play in basketball? So, so when I got to high school, um, you know, I was, uh, cause again, we didn't have anybody that was real tall, Yeah. Uh, but so uh, I, I was always a guard. Um, but I was probably a little bit of a bigger guard in high school. Um, and, uh, but, you know, going through the recruiting process, um, what I didn't know was I was, uh, it, this was like the, the early eighties, you know, yep. when I was, in, when I was in college, I mean, when, when I was in high school and when I went on my recruiting trip to UNH, they were actually painting the three point line down because they, they were putting the three point line in for my freshman year in college. Oh, wow. And, um, so I shot the ball from three point distance all through high school. And my coach didn't really like it that much because it didn't, you know, he's like, why are you shooting from so far away? And I said, it's just what I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but it was just a funny thing because that was, I think that was a big thing in the recruiting process for me was I didn't even know that the three point line was coming into college. Oh, wow. and, uh, and they said to me, well, that's one of the reasons why we're recruiting you. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a fun, you know, it was just a fun time that they, they nobody knew. And it was, the fun part about that was uh, my freshman year being the first year they had a three point line in, in, in division one. Wow. Um, was nobody knew how to use it from a coaching standpoint. Like nobody knew what to do with it. So um, now it's like everybody's shooting threes from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was only like, if you were down maybe 10 with two minutes to go, then the coach would start saying, we need to start, start shooting threes. Uh, so they didn't really have a whole lot of plays set up for it and <laughs> different things like that. So uh, it was just funny how the game evolved from there. Um, and uh, but it was, a, you know, but it was an exciting time in college because it, it just uh, it just everybody was trying to figure out a new a new toy to play with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. And like, how did you was UNC uh, U, UNH the only college that was looking at you or was there another college? Like, how did you decide to go there? Uh, no, I mean, I had I mean, I had other uh, had other you know, schools like, uh, you know, Brown, URI, uh, uh, BU, um, you know, some, you know, not a ton, I wouldn't say a ton of schools, but um, there was something about UNH to me that, that when I first, when they first started to recruit me, um, I had no reference point of how far away New Hampshire was, right, from Bristol. <laughs> yeah. And so my first reaction was, boy, I'm not going all the way up there. And you know, that's too far away. It's in the boondocks somewhere. And, yeah. and then I came to realize it was only two hours, under two hours from my house. It was on the seacoast. And it was something about when I got to the campus that it just, uh, it just felt right. And um, uh, Jerry Friel uh, was my coach and, and he had already been at UNH for about 20 years. And, um, you know, he was an established veteran coach. And, um, you know, it just, it just seems like, you know, they always say that you, once you get on a campus and you, you, you start talking to people and you start talking to the team, um, it, fe it felt right to me. And, um, and so, so I, I signed. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's great. I, I feel like I've heard that from like players that, you know, go, go through the rec recruiting process and they're like, why did you choose this school? And they're just like, it just felt comfortable. It just felt right. It felt like a good fit. So that's, that's awesome that you're able to, uh, you know, end up going to UNH playing division one. Those are some good offers you had from other colleges as well too. Yeah. I mean, and again, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't classify those other schools as like, you know, offers either. I mean, it was, it was really, uh, the way things kind of came together was, was very quickly. And it was one of those things that, uh, I just felt, I just felt it was the right thing to do. So I didn't, you know, I didn't go on my five recruiting trips and like all of some, some of these big time division one players do. Yeah. Um, but I was just happy to have the opportunity to, you know, to play and, and, uh, and it was a great school, great, got a great education there. Um, and uh, it was the right fit for me. That's, that's great. That's awesome. And then what is all of a sudden when your career is over with, you know, what, what is your decision to get into coaching? So <clears throat> I worked a lot of camps when I was in college. And one of the things that uh, uh, one of the places that I, that I worked 
uh, I had to work actually was my, my college coach, Jerry Friel ran a camp at Phillips Exeter Academy up in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we all, all the freshmen had to go to the camp. Um, that was like a, a rule back then. And, um, and I got exposed to that, but then I also, you know, was a, um, uh, during college I would work camp. So I, you know, I spent my, I think it was after my freshman year, I, I spent, I think it was seven weeks just going from one camp to another as a counselor. And yeah. so I went down to Georgia tech and Notre Dame wow. and, uh, worked at UMass and, and Providence camp. Um, and, uh, a whole bunch, I mean, a whole bunch of places, five star, you know, I went and I worked at five star, um, And, uh, so they were, you know, that was, that was fun for me, but, but for me, I, you know, I always as a counselor was, was more interested in, could I get into the coaches meetings? Cause every night, which was really cool back then in the camp circuit, the coaches would all get together and have like a clinic, you know, they would just kind of the high school, the college coaches, they would, you know, get some pizzas and they go in a room and they would just talk about one topic or whatever. So I'd always talk my way into those, uh, those meetings. So I didn't have to go to dorm duty. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had an interest in getting into coaching. Um, so I, I, I do remember, I mean, Rick Patino was at Providence then that was right around the, the you know, the final four year. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the summer after that, but I mean, I, I went there and, uh, after I was supposed to go to dorm dude and I actually went up to coach Patino and I said, um, you know, look, I'm really interested in coaching. And he used to do a clinic every single night for, for the coaches, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, so I said, was there any way I can, I can get in there and, and be part of that clinic? And, and he thought I was just trying to get out of dorm duty. So he kind of started, you know, you know, saying, you know, no, we need you over there. And this whole thing, I said, no, I really want to get into coaching. And he said, he said, do you really want to get into coaching? And I said, yes. And he said, all right, here's the deal. He said, I'll let you come. He said, but you better have a notebook. And he said, and if, if I see you slacking off at all, I'm going to throw you right out of the, right out of the room. Wow. And so it was pretty cool that he, he actually gave me an opportunity to, to, to be in there and, and to, to learn. Um, but you know, five star was a great experience for me too. There was you know, tons of great coaches there. And I went there as a camper as well. Um, you know, and, and it's funny back when uh, I was thinking about this today, back when I was coming up as a high school player, uh, we talk about AAU now. Right. And, and so okay one of the ways that I actually got noticed as a player uh, was through the, um, through AEU, but there was not one team in Rhode Island oh, wow. uh, on no AEU teams in Rhode Island. None. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I heard, about, I heard about a team uh, called buddies over in New Bedford. Okay. And uh, who traveling all over the place and, and playing in tournaments and, and having some, some good success. And um, so uh you know, I, I made a cold call to the, to, to the person that was running the team. And I just said, is there any, any way I can get on this team? <laughs> and, uh, he didn't know me from a hole in the wall. And, and, uh, I just remember, you know, he said, well, he said, look, I, I run this league over in Westport mass. And he said, why don't you come over so I can see what you, you know, how you play and different things like that. So I kind of worked my way onto that team. And that was huge because, uh, back then it was like these weekend tournaments were, um, were really all over New England. I mean, Ramil Robinson was playing for, you know, a, a Boston team and, you know, some, some players like that. So, I mean, those are the kind of tournaments that we were getting into, but when you played AU back then, I mean, you had to, you, 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 you know, anybody couldn't play on an AU team because like, there were so few around. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but it was a really good experience because there were a lot of college coaches there that, that, that were, you know, able to see me um, play. And then also, um, you know, going to five-star, was you had to be invited that was an invitational camp and mm-hmm. there was also another camp called eastern invitational that was over in new jersey um which is again another invitational camp so being able to go to those places um you know gave me some exposure um and i i, I remember this i remember five star back in the early days because as a as a, play, as a camper you know going up to uh, robert morris college in in uh i think it's, I think it's pittsburgh and um but when we played, there, there were no, sh- you know, shirts with the numbers on them and all this other stuff. It was shirts and skins. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. When we played games, uh, um, <clears throat> it was very rudimentary, I guess. But I remember when we were playing games, uh, you know, the, the court would be lined with college coaches, you know, assistant coaches and different things. And they would all have their golf shirts on with their school logos. Yeah. So you're trying to impress all these coaches, right? It was like almost like a, 
a crazy thing. So it was a guard dominated game because uh, what would happen is if you made a good play, some coach would just yell out and ask you what your name was and you'd be running back on defense and, they, and you'd have to yell your name and they would have some list. And so that's how recruiting was done back then. Wow. And, that's crazy. And, uh, but it was, uh, but you know, it was a fun time to, 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 to be around. Cause of course everybody wanted to, uh, to impress these coaches. Right. And then you go back to the dorms and say, Hey, the, you know, the UMass coach uh, was looking at me and, you know, and those kind of things. So that, that, but that's, that's how you know, it was before the internet, before cell phones, before all of that. So yeah. the recruiting process was not a, an exact science as it is now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a big, it's a huge difference. I mean, now, like, I mean, look at Zion Williamson. Everyone knew who he was when he was like a freshman because of these big, all these highlight tapes to come out of him, like blocking people and dunking at like that. Well, and, and, but this, this reminded me of a funny story that, uh, that, that happened at five star to me. And, I mean, I was devastated by this because I was, uh, it was my junior year. So it's an important year, to, you know, to, to show what you can do. <clears throat> and they, and there was this kid, a younger, a younger kid that they moved up from a lower level um, and put him into our division, which was the top division at, at the camp. And, um, and so I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm going to eat this kid up, right? Because he's a little kid. I'm going to be able to, you know, really show, show what I can do. And, uh, and, and he absolutely abused me in, the, in, in this camp. And I, and I was so devastated at the end of the day. Uh, I went back to my dorm and I said, I'm never going to be able to play in college after this. And uh, the next day I found out it was Sean Miller. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. And he, his father used to take him around the country and do all these ball handling drills. Yeah. Um, and do all these like skills type things and everything. And I didn't know who he was until I saw him at the, at the uh, lecture and, and doing all these, all these ball handling drills and different things like that. So it made me feel a little bit better about myself and how I, how I was able to, to do it. But, um, you know, but those are the kind of things that would happen is you, you'd be playing against guys that you ended up seeing on TV in college that, uh, you know, that you didn't know about because there was no internet and you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These exactly. people were coming from. Yeah. Players everywhere. So it was kind of fun. That's awesome. That's, that's so cool. You got the, got those, got those experiences and it sounds like such a different time compared to now and like playing against those guys and be part of those camps and everything like that. That's awesome. I'm kind of jealous. And that's cool that you got to approach Rick Pitino about the coaching thing and how that, how that couldn't go. Yeah, no, it was, it, no, it was a fun time, but again, I think that's, that's where I got the coaching bug from. I think it was, uh, you know, I just had the good fortune to be around a lot of good people and, uh, that, you know, encouraged me and taught me, but I, but I was a student I, I, of the game. I really, you know, I, I wanted to do that. And, and I always had my eye on coaching. I had a couple of uh, teammates from UNH too, that went into coaching uh, that were older than me. And I kind of watched, watched their progress and, and different things. So that's kind of how I got, got the bug. That's awesome. And how did you start out at uh, Roger Williams as an assistant? Uh, so again, I, I had a lot of contacts growing up in Bristol. I had a lot of contacts there. And uh, the coach at the time was uh, Dwight Datcher, um, and he was also the uh, athletic director. Um, so I had done an internship one summer um, in, in their athletic department uh, while I was in college. And then uh, after I got out of uh, UNH, I did want to get into coaching. Um, so, but I was coming home, and I was going to be in Bristol for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so I just happened to make a call, and I just called up the, the Dwight, and I said. Uh, you know, do you need any help? I wasn't even looking for a, you know, paid position or anything like that. I said, hey, you need any help with the team. I'm going to be, I'm going to be home. Um, and he said, actually, he said, I, I've got an assistant coaching position open. Um, are you interested? And wow. I said, well, absolutely. So he, he hired me. Um, and, and it's funny cause I was the only assistant. So, you know, basically I was doing all the recruiting, uh, you know, encore coaching, but it was awesome. I mean, because it was just a great time for me to, to, to be able to get involved and, and have a lot of responsibility uh, right away. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, but again, going to the division three level from D one was, was, uh, was a little bit of a change because the, the, there was just a, a you know, different uh, type of style, different everything. Yeah. Um, but it was just a great learning experience for me to be able to be in, in the gym every single day, um, and learn from, learn from, uh, you know, I did that for, uh, for two years. I was an assistant coach and then, uh, Dwight moved on to a, a, another job down in DC 
and um, I was able to get the head coaching job uh, at the age of 23. Wow, so, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had three great, so I had five great years there, but I mean, I had three as the head coach. Um, and, uh, but it was tough. I mean, you know, I think when you're young, and you probably know this from your, from your days, you, you kind of think you know everything, right? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, when, when you're an assistant coach, you know, you don't have to make all those big decisions, but you can, you can criticize everything that's going on, right. From, yeah, from your seat and you don't have any of the pressure, yeah. but when you slide over that one seat, all of a sudden things change. And, um, so, you know, being, being in the position that, uh, to be the head coach really helped me a lot to help me get organized and get my philosophy together of how I wanted to do things. Um, and, uh, but it was tough because I was only, in some cases, a year or two yeah. years older than than my players. That's so crazy. That's that's that wow. That's, that's what I thought about when you said that. I was like, that you just know, there's not a lot of separation there <laughs> at that age age level. No, so you know we had, uh, but I, I mean, I, the, the, there was one funny story. I thought my career was going to be over before it started. Um, <laughs> it was my first year, and we uh, we had a game at Wentworth. And uh, my assistant coach drove one van and I drove another van. We had two vans and we drove up to Boston. Uh, we had a game. We came, uh, we came out of the game. Uh, we won the game. There was, there was uh, two players that I had that were pretty good, pretty good scorers. They both scored over 20 points in the game. And um, we were walking out to the, to the vans and we had these sandwiches to give to, to all the kids. So we're passing all that out and everybody's loading up the, the van, the vans. And, um, one of my players said to our manager, um, I got to run back into the locker room because I left something in, in there. Don't leave without me. Yeah. But I didn't hear it. Uh, oh, and no. my manager didn't tell me. So we loaded up our vans and we left. <laughs> and so I, so I drove, we drove all the way back to Bristol and, uh, the guard, the guard at the, at the guard shack came, uh, it was funny. He came, he came out, which he never does when we get back to, to the campus. Yeah. And he stopped. The and I said, what's going on? And I rolled down the window and he, and he goes, Hey, uh, did you leave? Did you leave something in Boston? <laughs> and so I turned around, I looked on the floor and I'm like, well, I, we got the ball bag. We got our med kit yeah, yeah. And, and all that. I said, no, I think we got everything. He goes, how about two of your players? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, Wentworth uh, drove they had a couple of work study kids that drove drove them back to campus so I had to wait for them so the next day I walked into the athletic director's office and I was sure that I was going to get fired yeah you know? and so you know those are the those are the kind of learning curves that you get at the uh, when you're a young coach and <laughs> trying to figure out you know, just make sure you leave with the same amount of kids that you that you started with yeah that, that's that, that, <laughs> that's crazy and you were named when you were named the coach, you were the youngest coach in the NCAA history, right? Like the youngest coach at the time in NCAA, not in history. Well, at the time, yeah, at the, at the time, uh, yeah, and that 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 kind of came out. Which again, I you know, I never really thought about anything like that. I think it was just a it, it was just a, a a really fun time to uh, to really just be about basketball. I mean, yeah. it was that you know, I just got out of college. I was living at home, so it, it was just a you know a really fun time for me to just to to really tinker and 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 start building a program. So it was, it was fun. That's great. And, and how did you end up decide to go to coach at Portsmouth? So, um, so John Dias was the coach at Portsmouth at the time that I was, uh, that, that I was at Roger Williams and, and he was actually somebody that coached me. He used to be the Rogers coach, yep. uh, in Newport for a lot of years. And he actually coached me at a couple of camps and I happened to bump into him at a golf course and it was the summer uh, after my fifth year at Roger Williams. And, um, we still have this argument about who, who hit the ball and the other, the other one's fairway. I, you know, I say, it was, I say that it was him that hit into my fairway, but he says it was me that hit into his. <laughs> so we actually just crossed paths on the, on the golf course. And he happened to say that he was leaving Portsmouth. And he said that, uh, he goes, I think they're also looking for an athletic director. And he said, you should apply. And so, I was 27 at the time and um, I didn't have any experience as an AD or anything like that, but I did have an interest in administration. And um, so I, you know, I looked into it and, and one of the reasons why I looked into it was because 
you know, I had these aspirations of coaching at the college level. And, but whenever I would go to a camp or I'd speak at a, at a clinic or something like that, I always found that the, the, the happiest coach, the happiest coaches I ever saw were the high school coaches. Yeah. And, you know, and cause they were, you know, they didn't have to move around a lot. They, you know, they had, they established their programs. They could do, they could have, you know, a lot of fun and, um, and, uh, and they just loved the game. And so I kind of said, well, you know what, it's kind of a unique opportunity. It's kind of close by. Let me just go, for, go for the experience. And I went for my interview, uh, for the athletic director's job and, uh, they offered me the position. Um, but I had, I didn't really have any intention to coach at that time. Cause I said, you know, this is going to be a big change of trying to run an athletic department now for the first time with no experience. And, um, but when I got to campus, um, the superintendent at the time, uh, came up to me and said, you know, I really want you to coach the basketball team. And I said, well, I'm, I really want to concentrate on building this program right now. And maybe it's not the right time. And, and he asked me again, uh, he said, you know, I really want you to coach. And I didn't really know much about the team at all. And, um, so in my very first year, um, you know, I'm trying to get myself established as an athletic director, um, basketball season rolled around. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get to know the kids and I inherited a really good team from John Dias. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, um, they were, uh, so in my, fr- in, in our first year, um, uh, they had gone to the, they had gone to the civic center the year before and lost. Um, and, uh, a lot of kids returned on the team. Um, and, but it was all, you know, again, all a new group to me and, and, you know, trying to figure that whole thing out. Um, and, and we, uh, we ended up uh, getting back to the civic center that first year and we won the, we won the class B championship. So it wow. was a, it was a whirlwind ride um, and a great group of kids, by the way. And, and we, we played Woonsocket in the, in the finals. Um, it was a pretty good team. But, but we were like a, not an offensive team. Like we had, we had a good solid fundamental team, uh, but we weren't great scorers and um, had a lot of good kids and they knew the game. Um, Cause John Dias, I, you know, I think is a really tremendous coach and, and uh, really taught the fundamentals and, and gave a real good foundation for us to, to, to be, uh, to be able to be successful. Um, so what I tried to do in that first year was just, um, adopt you know the, the plays that they already knew like I, I figured it would be easier for me to learn the system that they already knew versus me trying to blow the whole thing up in my first year and try to put all these new things into place yeah um but everything was everything was built on defense that year and, and uh the, you know these kids just locked people down and um the score of that of that championship game we, we won the game 49 to 36 wow and and I, and, and we held, uh, we held Woonsocket to 13 points in, in the first half. Wow. That's crazy. And, and I, I can't remember exactly what we, I think we were up about eight or 10 points at the, at the half. Yeah. So we weren't scoring a lot, but we we're holding teams down. And, uh, but I just, I just remember like that eight or 10 point lead at halftime. It felt like a 20 point lead because, you know, the kids were so good defensively that yeah. we just felt like we were in control. So that was, that was a, that was a fun first year. That's all. Yeah, I can imagine being the first year come right into it. And then when you, when you took over that team in, uh, in 96, um, did you stick to the, the same game plan or did you switch up the, your, you know, implement your own game plan? How how that work out? Yeah. I mean, after that, I mean, so the, so the next year, so my second year, uh, 90, in 97, um, we actually made it back to the civic center again and um, we lost to Shea by three oh. points. So, um, so that, you know, but it was, uh, you know, at, at that point, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to establish an athletic program, right. And yeah. think about every single program, but on the other side of it, um, you know, I, I still had this love for coaching and I really wanted to do that, but I was, I was getting burnt out to be yeah. very honest. I mean, you know, trying to do, trying to do all those things, learn to be an AD, learn the administrative side of things. Um, and then coach as well. Uh, yeah. I was engaged to get married uh, you oh, know, wow. at, the, at the time. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of things going on in my life. Um, so, 
I coached for, you know, I coached for those first three years when I was at Portsmouth. And then, then, um, then I just transitioned into just being the athletic director and tried to concentrate on that and, and build a good program. So, but, um, you know, fortunately for me later on, um, I was able to come back to coaching, which was fun. That's awesome. And then you went back and you won another state championship in 2010. <laughs> and I came back. I, I, yeah. Well, but, but that, and that was a completely different experience because at the, at, when I came back, um, you know, it took, it took some time to build the, the program. And now at this point I, I was kind of saying, okay, look, I'm going to just put my own philosophy into this and, and really, you know, uh, you know, do some different things. And, um, and, and so we, you know, we, we had, we had a good run and, but it was a, you know, it took, it took a few years before we got back to the finals. So we, we actually made it to the Ryan center that year. Um, but the, uh, you know, completely different style of play, you know, too. We had a lot better offensive players. I mean, we had uh, Andrew Travis who ended up going on to play at Butler. Oh, wow. Um, he, uh, he was a sophomore for us and wow. um, he ended up leaving. He left, he left after that year uh, <clears throat> and went over to Cushing Academy and then he ended up going to Butler. Um, but, uh, you know, he was you know, by far, you know, our best player, but we also had, uh, kid by the name of Patrick Fagan, who was, who was a tremendous player. Um, we had a kid by the name of Mike Dublin, who was a tremendous defensive player for us. And, um, so we had a, we had a really good team. I mean, we, we, we had a really good solid team all around and, uh, we, we beat a good situate team in the finals that year at the Ryan center. So, um, you know, but that was a completely different experience. So, so, you know, getting to the, getting to those championship games is always fun. I mean, it's always a fun ride, yeah. um, but uh, it's, uh, you, you know, it, but you, you never, ever take anything for granted when you get that far, because it takes a lot to, to be able to get there and win. I mean, it really does. And, and it's, uh, and it takes some luck too. I mean, yeah. because, you know, you, you're going to avoid, you're going to avoid some buzzer beaters and you're going to, you know, squeak out some wins that, that you maybe shouldn't have. And, um, so it just, uh, but, but again, when you get into a season like that, you know, it's special, you, you know, that you've got a special group and, um, you come to practice every single day and you know, that things are going to work out, um, uh, very well because the attitude's good. The team, the, the character is good that, you know, kids are holding each other accountable, like all those things that are, that are important when you're building a team all kind of come together at the right time. That's awesome. That's, that's great. Yeah. I mean, like you said, and, and when you make a championship run, sometimes there's that, that bit of luck too, because you avoid that, you know, a buzzer beater, like you said, or the, the you know, someone gets away at a fast break, maybe misses a layup at the end of the game, who knows? So that, that's awesome. That's crazy that you're able to, you know, in your two coach stints, you know, you're able to win uh, two championships, uh, you know, for your times, both being both there. Um, I want to ask you, what is your coaching philosophy? Um, so, you know, to me, it was, you know, again, it's, it's, I think at the high school level, especially when you're at a public school, you, yeah. you know, you're taking what you're taking what's there. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so I, I think you have to be adaptable. I mean, you have a, definitely a, a style that you want to play. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, of course I, I, you know, I was a scorer, so, you know, I would prefer to play an up tempo, you know, type of style and yeah. have a lot of scoring, but sometimes we didn't have a lot of kids like that. You know, in Portsmouth, um, you know, football was, was huge. Right. And, and some, some other sports were huge. So they played basketball, but in some cases it wasn't their, their first love. And yeah. so, um, you know, we tried to build everything off of our defense. We really, you know, we really tried to make sure that we were fundamentally sound. I love to play man to man. Um, you know, we would press if we, if we felt like we had the athletes to do it. Um, but, uh, and, and then, you know, and then minimize mistakes on offense. I mean, those are, those are the things that, that we always, you know, drilled every single day is just minimize your mistakes, minimize your turnovers, um, you know, execute things the right way and just understand time and score. Um, you know, those are the things we worked on, but, but individually we took everybody's skill set, and we, and I tried to tweak our, you know, our plays, our offense to, to, you know, maximize their skill levels. Um, sometimes you have young teams that you have, you've got to, you know, take, you have to be patient with. And other times you've got, you know, kids that can, can take a lot more. So I learned, and again, it takes a while as a coach to learn that you have to do that because sometimes, you know, when, when I was younger, I think we, we just, you know, we're running, 
you know, alley-oop plays and different things. And I'm yeah. saying, we don't have the kids to do that, you know, and, and yeah, that, but that's how I want to play. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that's awesome. And then uh, how did you, what was, what's the honor like to be named coach of the year three times? Well, I mean, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's a, it's an honor because it's, it, it's given to you by your peers yeah. in the coaching profession, but at the same time, I, 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 you know, I feel like it's, it's a product of our team success, right? You know, if you're having a good season, uh, you're probably going to be considered for, for that type of an award. So, I mean, I, I, you know, certainly not why we do it. Um, certainly not why we're trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to do this for kids and it's always nice to be recognized. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's a product of, uh, to me, it's always a product of our team success. And, and, you know, I, I mean, I've had some good, you know, uh, great assistant coaches, you know, in, in that, that worked, that I worked with that really put a ton of time in. So when those, when those awards come, I think, you know, they, they have a part in that too. That's awesome. Yeah, that's true. And that's that it's, it, it goes, it starts, you know, from you and it works down with your staff and, uh, you know, your players and your team, like you said, if you, if you feel like you're gonna have a good team, you're definitely gonna be in the running for that, you know, that, that, that award. And it's always great to be recognized by your peers as well, too. Exactly. Yeah. And again, I mean, coaches, the coaching fraternity, especially in basketball is very, you know, very strong. It always has been Yeah. Uh, got tremendous respect for so many of the other people. And, uh, you know, and the, the, you know, th- those are the memories I think, especially for, you know, being on the Island and, you know, you've got, I mean, this, there's some great rivals rivalries out there that, that, you know, people know about and, you know, Rogers and, and Middletown and even Tiverton is not on the Island, but they're, they might as well be. Yeah. Um, um, there's some, you know, really fun, fun times. And uh, it's, it's just, I mean, I think that, that you can't ever underestimate the, the, the relationships that you make, you know, and, and, uh, and some just really incredible uh, games you know, that, that you, you know, with great crowds and, um, you know, just, just really fun experiences. And they, I mean, those are the things that I miss. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can imagine, I mean, being right there, you guys are all on that, on the Island out there, you guys are so all close together. I can imagine the games. I actually spoke to a couple, a player and coach Saris as well too. Uh, I, you know, I'm talking to them and both rivalry games are like, it's just packed. It's crazy. It's always loud. And like, it, it must be so much fun when you guys end up playing against each other. It's like always circle on the calendar, I bet. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, when we, we looked at it, too. Like at, at Portsmouth, we, we were fortunate to build a field house um, while I was there. But prior to that, I mean, there's three courts now. It's a really big gym. Um, but prior to that, you know, we had a, a one court, small little gym that had a, a bleacher right at the end of one of the baskets that, that uh, you know, the student section would be right under the basket uh, in and when, when you had a rivalry game, Tiverton in the Middletown or Rogers coming in, uh, the place is jam packed. I mean, on a Friday night, it's, there's nothing better to me than, than to, to be in those kind of uh, environments, not only as a coach, but I mean, when, when, uh, for, for the kids, I mean, for the kids, yeah. those memories are, you know, they last and they, they still, they still come back and talk about it and, um, and, you know, and it just doesn't, to me, it doesn't get any better than that. I know a lot of kids really have aspirations to go on to the next level and play in college. And, um, you know, I always say to them, you know, don't underestimate what you're going through right now, because this is a really special time um, in your lives. I mean, it really is. And, yeah. and when you look back, uh, you know, I think that, the, that doing, doing something with the kids you grew up with is so special, right? That. Yeah you know, you can't replace that. And so, you know, don't, don't think about where you're going right now. Just kind of stay in the moment and, and just enjoy the heck out of what you're doing right now. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's so true. It, it is true. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it now while it lasts and you have fun and be with the, you know, be with your, your, your fellow teammates or your fellow students and, you know, enjoy, enjoy the moment while it lasts. Cause you know, it's, you're going to move on to something and then it's going to change. <laughs> That's the best way to say, I guess, in some sort of way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and now I want to um, ask you, because you, you, you had mentioned that you're an athletic director, the athletic director at Portsmouth. You were also selected as a state, a state of Rhode Island's first athletic admin to, to serve on the, national, the NIAA board of directors. What's, what's that mean, like, important to you? I mean, that, that's crazy. That's such an achievement. Yeah, that well, that, I mean, to to me, that was a, 
it turned out to be, I didn't, I didn't expect to, to, to do that. Um, yeah. But, and, and I kind of can briefly tell you how it all happened, but, um, but to me, it was the, it was the best professional development um, opportunity that I've ever had in my career. I mean, uh, and, and so what it was is, is the, the National Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association uh, is like a support organization for high school athletic directors. And so there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, they plan a conference every year for, for athletic directors. They do a, they do a lot of uh, 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 learning uh, 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 workshops for, for ADs that are, that are geared specifically for high school um, athletic administrators, which again, it, there's such a difference between being in the administrative level at the college level versus the high school level. I mean, when you're, an, when you're a high school athletic director, there's really no staff. Like, like they have at a college level where everyone's got their own job to do. You're doing everything. So yeah. you're, you're the equipment manager. You're the, you know, you've got to hire coaches. You've got to sweep the floor when you have to. I mean, it's not as glamorous as people would, would think it is. And, and I have so much respect for our, our high school athletic directors. Um, from doing that job for 16 years, I understand uh, what they have to go through every single day to, uh, to provide opportunities for kids. Um, but um, I was involved with the, uh, the state high school um, athletic directors association, the, which was called the RI AAA. Yeah. Uh, and um, I was, I, I served a, a term as president. And while I was president, um, this opportunity came up to become part of the, uh, the section representative on the national board of directors, which our section of the country is all of the new England States plus New York and New Jersey. Oh, wow. And so, um, when the opportunity came for Rhode Island to be, to become, uh, the section rep, which was like a, a, a four year term, um, on that national board of directors, um, you had to have some certain qualifications in order, in order to be able to do it. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, as the president, I just happened to say to, to, uh, one of the, one of the people that was the uh, executive director at the time, you know, can you go back and look and see what the qualifications are? Because we really, as a state, should take advantage of this opportunity uh, and represent, you know, our state at the national level. Yeah. Uh, well, when the when the qualifications came back, it was only there was only a couple of people that had enough qualifications to be able to do the job. Yeah. And the other person really didn't want it. And I, you know, and to be honest, I didn't really want it at the time either because I was <laughs> I was, you know, getting back into coaching. Yeah. Um, but we didn't want to pass up the opportunity. So I ap apprehensively, I kind of, I, you know, I said, look, I'll do it. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so anyway, by, by doing that, you know, you've got to, uh, you've got to run the section meetings. Uh, there was some responsibilities uh, that I had to go to Indianapolis a few, a few times a year in order to go to board meetings. And, and, and our, our role was to set the course for, um, you know, what the NIAAA was going to be doing for that year. So setting the budget, um, uh, you know, setting up all the, the conferences, uh, doing, it was just a, it was just a completely different experience than I've ever been a part of before. And, and it, and it got, it gave me the opportunity to, uh, to work with some unbelievable high school athletic directors across the country. And so um, that, that really helped it from a networking standpoint, it really helped me become a better athletic director. Mm -hmm. uh, in my own state and bring and bring some things back to our state that I think that that were, were helpful to our high school ADs. That's awesome. That's such a cool experience to be able to, you know, work, uh, you know, obviously be the first Rhode Island athletic director to serve on the board. But that's that's awesome that you're able to meet other people from across the country, other athletic directors and work with them and, you know, even get some advice and tips from them and work closely with them. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, this is what it's about. I mean, I think no one no one understands what a high school athletic director does until they've actually done the job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they're really unsung heroes. I mean, they're really behind the scenes, making sure everything's right. And it's almost like a referee in a way. Like I, I think that they, you know, when you don't notice them, you know, they're doing an unbelievable job, but yeah. if there's something wrong, it's always the athletic director's fault. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It falls right on that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It always falls on them. So, uh, but they are, they are a tremendous group of people in our state. Uh, you know, high school sports do not run in our state without their, without their support and without uh, the job that they do. So I have so much respect for them. Yeah, that, it's, it's very true. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy job. Like you said, I don't think people realize how much 
how much really goes into it uh, at the high school level, you know, compared to the college level, the high school level, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. So that's, that's, that's crazy. And that's, that's amazing. You're able to get, get that experience. And now what was your decision to uh, make the move to the Rhode Island Interscholastic League as a assistant executive director? Um, so, you know, again, not, didn't intend to go down this path at all. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not like you, you know, I think back and I said, when I, when I was in college, I mean, I don't think I ever thought to myself and, you know, Oh, I really want to be the executive director of the round and scholastic league. Yeah. Um, I think it was just the, the way that it, it happened for me, I think was really organic in, in the fact that um, I got involved on a ton of committees um, at the league level, you know, yeah. alignment, sportsmanship, uh, uh, sport committees. Um, I was the director of golf for, a, you know, a while ran, r- you know, running the state championships, um, in, in those sports and just, and just getting involved, but not, not with an eye towards, you know, this is going to get me somewhere Yeah. as a high school AD and getting involved at the state level with the ADs association. Um, it was just kind of a natural thing. It just was, it was what needed to be done. I mean, I, I'd worked as a, a you know, a, co-director of baseball um i uh you know also the the basketball committee i was always on the basketball committee um so i had a really good understanding of how the league operated yeah interacted with uh you know dick lynch was the executive director when i first started um i worked a lot with him had a ton of respect for him and what he did uh uh, richard mcgarry was the assistant executive director at the time um, then Tom Mezzanotti came in, who was an unbelievable force in high school sports. I mean, his passion for, for high school sports is legendary. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, 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 I do miss him. Uh, you know, he, uh, he, he had, he was a ball of energy and, and he, you know, he got things done and, and it was a really fun relationship even before I got to the league office. I mean, it was just good to work with, you know, those people, um, the, you know, the principals committee on athletics is, is, you know, we're a principals organization and our principals committee on athletics is our board of directors. Yeah. Um, and so we work with them on rules and eligibility and, uh, you know, schedules and alignment and classifications and all these things that, that go on to, to help our, you know, our league be strong. Yeah. So I, you know, I had a lot of experience with that. So when the, when the, when Richard McGarrion was retiring, he announced his retirement um, and they posted the, the position, you know, I just read through the vacancy. I read through it and, and I just said to myself, boy, I, you know, <laughs> this might be something I could do. And, yeah. and, and, you know, but I was torn because I absolutely loved what I was doing at Portsmouth. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I took a leap back when I first started at Portsmouth um, to get into athletic administration and, you know, we, we built a lot, we did a lot of good things there. And, um, I, you know, I just, I, I lived in the community, you know, my, my daughter, you know, was going through the school system. Um, you know, uh, so my wife and I just, just being established there, you know, I, I, I just kind of felt I was torn and I literally, and I tell this story a lot. I literally waited until the last day um, I think the, the deadline was three o'clock and it was about two fifty nine when I finally hit the submit button to, to put my resume in. I was that un- unsure whether or not I wanted to even try. And, yeah. Um, so I did. Uh, and, you know, again, I went through the process and, and uh, uh, you know, got offered the position. And, and I, and I'll remember this because we, the, I, the way I was notified was we had a game against St. Ray's um, with coach Sorrentine was, was there. And, and it was our first uh, ever time that we, we moved up to uh, division one. Yeah. Um, so Portsmouth was always a, you know, division two class B type of, of, of a program. And after Andrew Travis left um, our program, uh, we were in a realignment phase and we actually requested to move up and, and, and I knew we weren't going to have Andrew there, but I just really wanted to challenge our program and, and take it to, to a different level. Yeah. So I'm going through this interview process and um, um, Tom Mezzanotti actually called me and I was, I actually went into the locker room because it was about five minutes before the game was going to start. It was going to be our first ever division one game <laughs> against the Rays. And I'm in the locker room fielding this call from Tom Mezzanotti and who's offering me the position. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Um, and so I, you know, I, I accepted it and my superintendent didn't even know at the time yeah. uh, that I was even applying. And, uh, and I went back out and coached the game and I was, I mean, I literally didn't, you know, I, I was just, my head was spinning because yeah, yeah. to myself, I, I just didn't expect this whole thing to come together the way it did. Um, and then, you know, I told the team after the, after the game, um, but I did say that the, the only condition that I had was that I wanted to be able to finish that basketball season. Uh -huh. um, I left to go to the, to the league office and I felt like I'd made a commitment to those kids and, and, and everything like that. So um, it was just, again, a really crazy, you know, time yeah. in, in my life, but you know, it, it was another leap. It was a leap of faith. And, and I just said, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. And, you know, 10 years later, um, you know, in the midst of COVID. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, in the midst of COVID. <laughs> uh, Tom, you know, Tom re decided to retire and he didn't retire because of COVID. He had already made his decision that he was going to do that. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we just, we transitioned in, into it and it's been a whirlwind ever since. So it's uh, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it is, that, that is crazy. I mean, uh, a heck of a time to take over as the executive director with uh, the pandemic going on, but you're, you're doing a great job and, you know, obviously working on some of a pandemic that I don't think any of us could have ever predicted or would have thought it would last as long or, you know, and how it's going to work. And it sounds like it's almost like a day by day thing in some cases for you guys, but you guys are doing a wonderful job and, you know, trying to make sure that these kids can get their senior season, hopefully in some sort of way. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the, the success of, of this year is really the, the, it's a really product of collaboration of, of all of the people involved. I mean, it's, um, I, I've never seen anything like this. I really haven't. I mean, uh, every single Monday, um, we have a, a, a call, a virtual call like this with all of the, all of our section. So every, every other state association in new England, plus New York and New Jersey, yeah, and we just and we just support each other. We just kind of network. What's going on in your state? What's working? What's not working? Um, and then taking these ideas, working with the Department of Health, uh, then then getting to the point of uh, meeting with superintendents and principals and athletic directors and saying, okay, this is these are the things that we have to do in order to provide a season for kids. Yeah, um, and and you know then having uh, you know and, and doing most of this virtually, right? Yeah. Uh, having coaches meetings of uh, going over the protocols, uh, answering questions, supporting them in any way we can. Um, I mean, it's been like nothing we've ever done. I mean, our, the, the athletic directors association, we're meeting with them more often than we ever have. Um, they're a great source uh, resource for us to get feedback on, on what's happening in the schools. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just been a, it's just been a really uh, crazy time, but on the other side, it's been really fulfilling to, to watch, uh, people adjust and, and, and do it for the right reasons. You know, it's, it's really about, I mean, in the end, it's really about kids. Yeah. Um, I, I think coaches, coaches right now are playing such an important role um, in, in, in the, in the mental health of kids, right? It's, it's to, for us, it's not, you know, most of the time when you're, when you're starting the season, you're starting to think about championship runs and, and all these kind of things. That's not what it's about this year. I mean, really, I mean, we're, we're trying to provide those opportunities, but really this is about just bringing kids together and, and, and giving them something positive to do and re-engaging them into school activities. I mean, there's no crowds right now. Um, there's no like, you know, the, the buzz that normally happens around, around this time. Um, but it's so important for these kids to get out of the house and, and re-engage in, in, in school activities just for their own mental health. I mean, we, we've been looking at Wisconsin uh, just did a study on this. And, and this was really concerning to me that uh, the, the part of what they were doing is trying to find out what the impact to kids has been yeah. and not having not having opportunities like like extracurricular activities. And, and, the, and the population that's taken it the hardest right now is, is the is, is kids that are in poverty. Um, and again, you know, we've got you know, we've got kids that are in poverty in every community. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're saying that 40% of those kids are experiencing mental health issues right now because they're, they're totally disconnected from school. Yeah. From the coaches from, uh, from being able to participate in sports. Um, they're just a lot, and they have no option. 
So it, it really is an important role that, that we're playing right now to enhance their education and to, you know, I mean, we, you know, we do talk about the fun part of sports, but, uh, you know, we, we fail to realize sometimes that there are kids out there that, um, you know, they may not be the best players on the team, but they need the, they need those teams more than they need anything. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the reason why they even go to school. That's the reason why they log on to virtual learning and, and, and different things because they want to have that opportunity. So, you know, I, I do feel that I do feel the anxiety of, of uh, what's going on out there. And it's really frustrating sometimes when, when we don't have the control to be able to provide what we normally provide for kids. So yeah, yeah. Uh, tough. It's just a tough, it's just a tough time, but we're, we're going to get through it. And um, I'm just hopeful that, uh, that things are going to start to improve and, and that uh, the rest of our seasons are going to go very well. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope so too. And that, I mean, that's a great point you put up, bring up about the kids. And I think that's the most important for you know, because in poverty, like you've mentioned, sometimes it's all like, this is what they really have. And this is the communication in some, some certain ways, but it's just amazing. And I hope, you know, it, it hopefully improves and everything great uh, turns out and you guys can, you know, start to look forward to on other seasons and start moving forward with things and, Maybe we'll eventually we don't have to worry about forgetting our mask when we go to the grocery store or something like that, or, you know, and stuff like that. So hopefully we can move forward. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really, I mean, it, you know, we keep thinking about this and saying, you know, we keep saying this time next year, you know, by this time next year, we're going to be in a much better place and things will be back to normal. And boy, I can't wait. You know, I, I really hope that once, once uh, the vaccine gets rolled out and, um, and we're able to have, you know, uh, big crowds at games again. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, the biggest problems are going to be like uh, people complaining about referees again. And Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what the problems you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those, those types of issues. And, yeah. I, you know, I shouldn't be in Division One. Uh, you know, my, I, my team can't compete. Like all those kind of problems that we, that we thought were huge. Yeah. And right now, they, they seem really small. Yeah, yeah, tiny, tiny. A tiny dot on the map of everything else that's uh, going on in the, in, the, in the world with everything that's happening. But hopefully we can, uh, you know, hopefully by this time next year, like we've been saying, we can get back to some normalcy and uh, move forward with this. And like you said, maybe get those complaints about the referees more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, think about like, you know, we, we always think about this, like uh, think about how important high school sports are to communities. Right. And, it's crazy um, how it's just not there right now. And yeah. people, people are starving, you know, to get back to supporting kids in their own communities and towns. And um, it, it's, uh, you know, so I, I, you know, my hope is that, that it's going to bounce back even better once we get past this, because I think people might appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah. Because we've been you, it for so long. I think you, I think you're going to get more people attending more games and uh, you know, not missing out. You obviously you miss out. You take a kind of take advantage of what you had before. And then when this came around, now you're like, oh man, I really miss, you know, the buzz of a rivalry game of a, 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 Port, a Portsmouth versus Middletown or, a, a, you know, a Rogers versus Middletown or Rogers versus Middletown or Tiverton. So it's part of, you know, it, it's part of my entertainment too. I mean, like I gotta be, I can't lie that, you know, part of the fun of doing the job that we have is that at the end of the week, being able to go to a high school football game or soccer game or, uh, you know, I just love to just be out there and see kids perform and, and just, you know, just have fun. And um, so, you know, I'm so looking forward to, to, to that first game that, that we can get back to, to normalcy. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be such a cool thing. Yeah, it's really. going to be. It's gonna be awesome. I'm sure we're going to you're going to see a bigger crowd of that, that first game of uh, normalcy as well, too. That's it. Yeah, that's that's really cool. be awesome. All right. So I got one last question for you uh, before we wrap it up. Oh, you know, amongst all this, the sports and everything else, uh, what's what's the one thing that you really like to enjoy outside of the, you know, the Rhode Island Interest League and basketball and everything? What's one thing that you enjoy outside of it? Yeah, that's, that's easy. It's golf. Uh, <laughs> all right. And there you go. Uh, before I say golf, I, 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 you know, I'll say family, too. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I, I think the, the one thing that if there is a positive that's come out of COVID is that the amount of time that we've had to spend together as a family has been, has been fun. And, um, you know, we're, we're all cooped up in, in different things, but, uh, you know, everybody's busy in, in, in their normal lives and running around and doing, doing their own thing. And right now it's like things have slowed down to the point where we're actually connecting, you know, again. And yeah. so that's a fun, that's a fun thing. But for me, 
the one thing that I've been able to do is golf. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and so everything that we've been doing and all the planning and different things, when, when just being able to go to the, go to a, you know, I, I'm a member of Green Valley in Portsmouth, which is, you know, only a couple miles from my house. Um, and, and just being able to spend time there and be outside and, and do something athletic. Uh, maybe golf's not really athletic, but I mean, it's, it's still fun. You know, it's a fun activity for us to do. And, um, and, you know, just be around people and be social. I mean, I think that's the, that's been the most fun thing for me to do outside of, you know, all the mess that we're dealing with. Yeah. I think I totally agree. I think I, golf has been, was definitely my, uh, a scapegoat more, more so than ever. I'm not the best player in the world, but I, uh, I do enjoy, like, it was nice to have that social. And I was actually talking to someone that were saying that, like, I feel like golf's going to pick up more this year. Cause it's like, it's more of an outside event and people could be outside with each other. It's like something it, different. I think it's the most normal thing that you, that, that you can do. Right. I mean, it, it just feels normal. It feels like, you know, when you're out there, it's just a different world and you can, you know, you're not really next to anybody anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, other than your group and you walk in the course and, um, but you're still competing. And I think that's, that's another thing as athletes that we, we just always like to compete at something. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely my, that's definitely my go-to right now. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you on that one. That was my, my big go-to. And then that's probably even my go-to come around spring, summertime as well too. But, uh, that's all I have for questions, uh, for you, Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Anything, any last uh, statements or anything that you have to say before we wrapped up? Any questions for me? Uh, I just, you know, Jeff, I just, like I told you before, I think that, uh, I think what you're doing is fantastic. And, and I, 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 you know, really enjoy listening to the podcast right now. And uh, it's a great distraction for me. So, um, you know, keep doing it, you know, and, and, and just thank, you know, thanks for the honor of uh, being able to come on with you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate, you know, appreciate you actually reaching out and the kind of words that you, had, uh, you had wrote to me. Uh, and then I really appreciate that. And that, that meant a lot to me. And, and thank you so much for the kind of words as well. I'm here. Uh, yeah. Happy to do it. And, you know, definitely, we'll definitely have to link up again and uh, do this again. Maybe on the golf course, we can do something out there. Too. That'd be even better. Let's yeah, do yeah. It. That'd be good. All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much for your time and everything. I really appreciate it. This has been great. Uh, good luck with everything you're doing, you, you and uh, everyone across the state, uh, the athletic directors and coaches as well. You all guys are all doing a great job, um, you know, making making seasons happen on top of something crazy that I don't think none of us would have ever experienced in our lifetime. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jeff. No problem.